Pastor back with you. I want to talk to you uh, a little bit this evening about uh, EMP protection. I want to talk to you uh, a little bit this evening about uh, EMP protection, uh, electromagnetic pulse protection. The reason I picked uh, this afternoon and this evening to do that, I don't know how closely you've been watching the news, but our time, late Saturday, early Sunday, there was uh, a CME, a coronal mass ejection from the sun. One of the severest, um, actually the severest one since 2007, if I read the article correctly today. And it will hit the earth in a glancing blow sometime late tomorrow morning into early evening tomorrow, depending upon where we're at, where we're located. Uh, this will, there will be disruptions. Uh, our lines have diverted flights and planes to move out of the area of the geomagnetic storms and uh, everything that's coming in and the effects of it. Uh, satellites are expected to be disruptive to a certain degree. It won't be a permanent long-lasting thing, but it will be a pretty serious event. As a matter of fact, it was labeled as an M9, which is the highest event there is in a medium range, it goes to the X scales next, which are the strong range. Uh, the, the, we will have and will experience some effects, whether you see them and I see them, you know, we may, we may not. Uh, the auroras will be uh, very active during this period of time. The uh, northern lights, the southern lights, they will be very active and they'll be seen from a much greater area. But that got me to thinking about uh, EMP. And Having a background in electricity and electronics, I uh, got to thinking about some different ways that you could handle EMP. Of course, there's the Faraday bags, which are probably the cheapest, most practical, and most effective things out there today. But what if you don't have that? What if you need to do something different? What if you can't get them? You live in rural areas and you have to have them shipped in and uh, you can't get them for several weeks uh, because of UPS issues or whatever. What can you do if you have some warning and you need to do EMP or if you want a rugged type of an EMP setup? I've got some things here that are uh, commonplace. A galvanized metal bucket with a snap-on lid. By the way, this one is made in America. It's solid, it's heavy, it's sturdy. I uh, got it from a local home improvement center, paid 15 bucks for it, uh, but around the homestead for EMP, for whatever I want to use it for, it's a good versatile bucket. Uh, anyway, this is something that I've used for a primary Faraday container. Also, this is a rechargeable radio, it works, it is in the box, you'll need it in a box of some kind, some type of an insulated type material, okay? now show you a couple of things to do, some stuff I recommend. This is just standard, good old fashioned aluminum foil. If you see something get thrown at me, it's just my wife because she didn't know I was going to use her aluminum foil to wrap Christmas packages with. So just bear with me. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to set this up just like Christmas time. We're going to set it however we need to. We're going to wrap this box in just like a Christmas package with aluminum foil. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it does have to be completely covered, nothing exposed. And you may already know about this, maybe you don't. Just something that I thought I would share, I'm not an expert at anything. Uh, some things I've got a little experience in, some things I'm even seasoned with some experience, but as far as an expert, I don't claim to be an expert at anything. I'm just a survivor. That's all. 
see we have now our box wrapped in aluminum foil so what we've got is the radio inside of an insulator which is the cardboard wrapped in a conductor this in itself by itself wouldn't act as a Faraday shield but this is tin foil and aluminum foil isn't very rugged it isn't very dependable it isn't very durable if this gets nicked or cut then you risk the integrity of your EMP of your Faraday shield so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a Ziploc bag a larger one I'm going to set this inside of it for some physical protection more than anything else then we will close it and mash all the air as much of the air as we can out of it okay so now we have our radio in a Faraday shield with some physical protection now I'm going to take our bucket our large Faraday container I'm going to open it inside it I have a plastic trash bag take the plastic trash bag set it inside of it the heavier the trash bag the better this was just for illustration only take your device set it in the trash bag fold it down around it maybe even twist it up real nice then mash all the air out of it set it in there put your lid on if you really want to be secure and have a durable Faraday container here, take you some self-tapping screws. Put a couple of them in it. That ensures the integrity of the seal because it's important with a Faraday shield that you have 360 degrees of coverage from a metal container. So we will put our, put our handle lock up on this. I can leave the handle locked down with the lid screwed in place. I can put it underneath. I can hang it up with the, with the handle here as you can see. I can put as many of those boxes in there as this thing will hold. You can take uh, PDAs. You can take your little hand cranked uh, generator radios and flashlights and things of that nature and put those in a box. Wrap them in aluminum foil. Put them in a plastic Ziploc put them in your trash bag when it gets when you get it full wrap it up real nice and tie wrap it twist tight fold it over put it in and close it here you have multiple layers of protection this way you have a durable physical protection on the outside you have an insulator with the trash bag you have a physical protection with the Ziploc bag which also acts as an extra insulator and then you have another Faraday shield in the aluminum foil and then you have another insulator with the cardboard box so even a large EMP will have a difficult time getting through that and I say that conservatively because in reality we don't have a lot of knowledge about EMPs especially knowledge that comes from experience it can be created in a laboratory and in certain settings and we know from experiments what we think EMP will do but until we have to experience one we won't have that type of knowledge to fall back on anyway here is something for you to think about something for you to work with and try uh, you may know about it already if you do that's great if you don't something for you to keep around the house usually you can find something similar to all of these in your home in your workshop in your basement in your outbuildings and if you are in a situation where you have to get ready for an EMP you'll be able to put something together very quickly otherwise get some Faraday bags put your stuff in a Faraday bag put a trash can liner in a metal bucket like this put the Faraday bags in the trash can liner seal it up with your seal it up close it up this way you've got physical protection you've got a insulator with the trash bag and then you've got your Faraday bags a lot of different ways a lot of versatility a lot of options in using the things that are on the market today to prepare for an EMP I hope this has helped you some in some way shape form or fashion God bless you until next time this is the pastor saying so long